So I want to thank everyone for coming, especially the family of Roger, as well as colleagues, friends, everyone that is here today. We really, really appreciate it. And thanks for your patience in getting going. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start right now. So uh, to have this dedication today is truly a pleasure for the city, as well as Roger's family. And uh, it's especially an honor for me because Roger was uh, not only excellent to work with here at the city, a professional through and through, but he was also um, a good friend, mentor. Um, he gave me a lot of advice, you know, and so, but he told me a lot of jokes too at the club and everybody knows that about him as well. Uh, just all the way around, Roger was just, you know, a wonderful, wonderful man. And so the city council has decided, you know, that certainly he deserves some recognition for all his contributions throughout Temecula. Um, he's been a staple in the valley forever and um, you know it would goes without saying that he's had a huge influence not only on the region but also on people individually and you know it goes all the way outside Temecula as well Roger was a founding member at Bear Creek along with Eli Calloway Dan Stevenson and so there's a lot of memories that people have around the valley that Roger influenced and certainly we want to thank um, Sherry, Katie, Spencer, um, Roger's wife, Sherry of 37 years, because truly um, it's very special, not only what he was able to contribute to the area, but what was he was able to contribute to people as individuals. So thank you very much for being here. So to start our program off, um, we're gonna go ahead and hand it over to Mayor Stu. So I'm going to keep it real short because I didn't actually know Roger. I can't believe I didn't run into him, though. I've been here 33 years. So I, as, as I saw a picture of him, Tony, I didn't realize Tony was his nephew. So Tony Berardino, it's brother-in-law. Yeah, not nephew. Um, so and it, it kind of tells the story of Temecula that how back then everybody kind of married each other and they're all cousins and, <laughs> you know, so... Um, <laughs> so anyways, thank you all for being here, and we did want to, um, Roger truly was one of the uh, founding members of this whole community, so we wanted to honor him, so in honor of him, thank you. So thank you for being here. Yeah, what I failed to mention, he was a fellow Meadowview resident with you, Stu. Yeah, so very, very nice. Um, this time, I'd like to hand it over to family and friends, and we're going to go ahead and start with Lance Newsom. Lance. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it, it's an honor for me to say a few words about Roger. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I, I was Roger's pastor for, a year, for several years, uh, and his confessions were quite lively. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but he, uh, Roger Epperson to me uh, means a lot. La last night we were at the club and uh, Ken said something. He's talking to somebody new and he just turned to the group and said, how do you describe Roger? That was what he said. And I thought, took those words, how, how would I describe Roger to people? And I said, the first thing I'd say is Roger's a funny guy. He's funny, uh, quick-witted, he would say things that nobody else would think of. He'd stand there and chuckle while you're on the ground, die and laughing at what he just said. Amazing. He loved a joke, right? Um, every day, I miss those jokes. I miss them. Uh, you had to be careful who you opened up around so that people couldn't see what it was. But it was, it was hysterical. It got to the point where at night, um, I'd be sitting there going through and I'd read something and start dying laughing and my wife would say, Roger? And I'd go, yeah, Roger. <laughs> and uh, so he was funny and he, and, and he was fun to be around. So for how many years, five of us every Saturday morning played golf together. And I'll tell you, no matter how hard that week was, when you showed up to tee off with Roger, you knew it was going to be fun because he made it fun. Uh, uh, I'll remind you of one thing that he would do. Roger was a good golfer, but he couldn't get out of a sand trap very well. And once he got in the sand trap, we knew this was going to be an experience. And so one, two, three, sand's going everywhere, the ball's still in there. 
and he'd do this thing, and I'll back up, but those of you who play golf with Roger know, he'd finally get it out, and he'd do this little, <laughs> just like that, <laughs> and everybody would just crack up laughing. But Roger was so much fun to be with, and uh, no matter how hard a week I had, I knew when I got there Saturday and Roger was there, it was going to be a fun time. So he's funny, uh, he was fun to be with, and to me, the bottom line for Roger, he was the real deal. And what I mean by that is, you know, some people will come up to you and say, hey, how, how, how's it going? And it's just their way to get a conversation going. When Roger would say, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? He meant that. He would want to know, how's my wife? How's my son? How's my daughter? He told us a, a, a story about Spencer one time, and it was, I, I think it was down at Torrey Pines, but Phil Mickelson was there, and, and he was trying to get his autograph. And Phil Mickelson gave him the autograph, and Spencer started to leave, and Phil Mickelson said, Spencer, wait. And, and Phil got down and said, so start talking about school, what grade you're in. And Roger said to me, it was amazing how much he cared. And I said to Roger, that's because you're that type of person. You're a person who cares. You really do. And, and so that made Roger just a special guy for me. He was fun, he was funny, he was fun to be around, but he was the real deal. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says this, woe to the one who when they fall, they're alone. But blessed are the one that has somebody when they fall, they have somebody to pick them up. Roger was that person. If you were going through something, if it was a hard time, he was there to pick you up. Love Roger, and I couldn't say this when I did the funeral, but FMTT for eternity, and I love him. <laughs> uh, I think who's next? Uh, uh, right now, Neil's coming up. This is uh, Roger's business partner for many, many, many years. So, Neil, it's all yours, buddy. You got a couple hours? Um, I just, I want to first thank the Epperson family um, that Roger and I got to have a part of each other's life. And I'm grateful for the Epperson family and grateful this, for this friendship. It's still strong and will always be strong. And sometimes I look out, look out into the world and think, what would, what, would, what would Roger's opinion be on this issue? What, what would he might do type thing? Um, I also want to thank um, the city of Temecula. We've been involved with the city since they were created. And Roger and I have owned this building since the early 90s. And I've worked with a lot of people. I just I want to th uh, thank some of the the old crew from the planning department, John Myers here, he helped us out uh, on this. I, the new crew that I dealt with, Eric Jones and uh, Patrick, and uh, not Patrick, but uh, Stuart Fisk, um, and also Luke Watson. I've worked with, on and off with them for years. I want to thank the Public Works Department. Incredible job that they've helped us here. Uh, Ron Marino, Pat Thomas, I see Amara Attar here. I just, I'm very thankful for the relationships and the, and the help. We had difficult times, but I know Roger would want me to say thanks, and I'm, I want to give that to you. A couple other, uh, Sherry Monroe, Larry Markham. Like one of Larry's comments was, what did you do now, Neil? What'd you mess up now? It was always, he would give it to me, and, and a lot of old friends of Roger's here. Um, but the thing I want to say, too, is Roger was about stories. He loved stories, and he would tell stories. So I'm going to tell you two, two or three quick stories. The first story, when we bought this building, we bought it in 92, I think. And we were in escrow, and Roger and I were up to our, our necks. We were, this was a big thing for us. And... So the escrow is going along and going along and it's supposed to close. And Roger's on the phone and he's looking at me and he's turned white. I said, what's going on? He goes, he gets off, he goes, you can't believe it. That was the State Department. And he, of course he makes a joke. He goes, what do you do now, Neil? <laughs> well, 
It was the State Department telling us that our escrow was frozen because we were buying this property from Lumber One. It was a Kuwaiti-owned company, and Saddam Hussein had just invaded Kuwait. So they froze everything, and I thought he was making it up. But he goes, I go, yeah, right. He goes, no, it's real. Well, it was real. It took week, months for it to become unlocked because they were, didn't want someone to get a hole in money. But that was, that was the start of it. Um, then about a year or two later, this is pre all the work that the city of Temecula has done, uh, the flood control district of Riverside, Army Corps engineers, before they built this magnificent uh, flood control channel, the town flooded and we had water it was 18 inches coming down Main Street, came through the front door and came out here, running through the building. And we, this, Roger and I thought, well, we're finished. We're done. Well, Roger style, oh, Neil, we'll get it figured out. We got it figured out. We survived it. Um, the last story is, I can't tell you how many times Roger and I were down, been down here over 30 years. It was with a problem or it was a, project and we'd come in the early morning, we'd come at night, we would come during the day and we'd talk and we'd walk and we'd figure things out and we'd walk this building and oh let's do this, let's do that and we'd talk to the city and figure something out and I'll, that's the part I miss the most is talking to him and sharing ideas and he would be coming up with ideas and I'd be slamming him down and then you know we we come together and then we worked it out. We worked, we worked with each other. And those stories, I, I, we've covered every inch of this ground. And there must be 50 stories here that I could tell you that, of things we worked through. And I, I just wanna say that um, it's an honor to have known him, to have been friends, business partners for four, over 45 years and I, to the, he will always be remembered. He will always be part of my life and part of my family's life. And Sherry and I and the families, the two families, I know what Roger would want. Carry on. Keep it together. Don't go crazy, Neil. Just keep it going. Thanks. Good morning. Um, I'm Roger's daughter, Katie. Um, I wanted to thank Neil for sharing what only scratches the surface of the many stories of he and my dad's experiences together. And I urge you all to pester Neil for the stories that he decided not to share today. Those are the really fun ones. Um, on behalf of my mom, Sherry, my brother, Spencer, and the entire Epperson family, including my grandmother, who is still on her way, um, Bobby Epperson, Roger's mother, who turned 100 years old this April, and who generously volunteered to close the ceremony with an interpretive dance. Um, hopefully she gets here in time. Uh, on behalf of us all, I want to express our sincerest gratitude to the city of Temecula for this incredible honor in allowing my dad's legacy to live on in the heart of Temecula. Uh, and I wanna thank everyone here today for agreeing to sit in a parking lot at 10 a.m. on a Thursday morning um, for over two hours. Your dedication is noted. Um, my dad moved to Temecula in the mid 70s when it was known as Rancho California and was always so proud to live in Temecula and call this city his home. He met my mom at a Temecula Chamber of Commerce mixer and they both raised my brother and I here in Temecula. That's not to say my dad didn't love to travel, but whenever someone abroad asked my parents where they were from, my mom would give the generic, oh, north of San Diego, but my dad would always boast, we're from Temecula, like he was on working overtime for the tourism board. Uh, my dad played a pivotal role in developing this city and always championed the growth of Temecula, something our family has really come to resent, given all of the traffic now. Um, Mayor Stu, we can discuss that later. Uh, on 
Friday and Saturday nights growing up, my dad and I would hop in the car and we'd drive through Old Town on Front Street. It was probably at least once or twice a month, we'd hop in the car and drive down uh, Front Street and look at how alive it was with the music and the lights. And my dad used to call this ritual checking the investments. Um, and he was absolutely invested in this city. In the spirit of telling stories, I'll end on a quick story about a man from Temecula. Um, if you've lived here long enough, you'll probably know who I'm talking about. Um, there was a man named Animal who was a homeless man who lived in Temecula. And he was a part of our community for years and would wash windows and do odd jobs in the community. Um, I read somewhere that volunteers would sometimes buy him a ticket to go see his mom in South Carolina, but he would always come back to Temecula and work these odd jobs and see the good people of Temecula. And my dad always admired and respected Animal and for his kindness and generosity. And when Animal passed away, I found out years later that my dad and Neil paid for his burial to honor uh, this humble fixture of Old Town, something they didn't share widely. Um, Temecula is a community made up of all walks of life. The more the city grows, the more color is added to the fabric of our community. And I implore the great people of Temecula to live by the golden rule that my father so often did and to have love and respect for your neighbors, no matter their walk of life, because we're all invested in this city and this community. And that is my father's legacy. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you all for coming and waiting, and we really appreciate uh, what has happened today. Um, though we all miss Roger dear, dearly, today's a really happy day, a very happy day to see him being honored by not, not only the city, city council, but to see all of you here truly is special. And so at this time, now we are getting ready for the unveiling of the sign. So if everybody wants to kind of shift over, and we will start this process.